What is going on, everybody? YouTube, people of America, of Germany, the Middle East, wherever the heck y'all are from. I know there's a lot of people on here that I've gotten a lot of comments from people in like French and German. So I know there's other people from other countries watching this YouTube, and I appreciate you guys because. I'm sure my channel compared to someone with 50k subscribers or 100k subscribers is boring and I'm not comparing myself to others. I am I already know what it is. I've had to set up everything that I'm doing from scratch with no financial base, just getting out of prison a little over 3 years ago. So uh you know, that being said, I think everything that I've been doing independently has been moving along pretty well. And last year on Instagram a lot of people don't know. I had numerous posts on Instagram last year go viral, or not. I don't even necessarily want to say go viral, but reach tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of accounts, like every reel I was doing. This was a while back, and I had so much organic growth last year, and obviously this year too, because I've done so much networking and traveling and being seen places, and that's. I honestly say that's one of your. That's going to be one of your biggest. Uh, if you're not looking for that viral hit or you're not able to get crazy reach in Instagram's algorithm, traveling and networking is going to do it because that's where people are actually going to physically see you and be able to place you somewhere with something or someone. Hence, people working with brands, Young LA, everybody like that. You see a bunch of successful people under one umbrella, under one company say, oh, he's lit, he's lit, he's lit. Apparently, everybody's lit. So just navigating the landscape of this to see uh you know basically i didn't get into this to be a bodybuilder i got into this to be a fitness model a very elite good looking strong fitness model not just some pussy influencer i wanted to be known as a tall handsome man but stronger than the, than most of them i don't need to be 300 pounds i don't need to be 250 and, and deadlifting 800 pounds or anything crazy like that Though I do want to dead, deadlift 600, and I got close to it, 545. So, uh, just doing this little vlog. Uh, my tripod's broken, so I'm not able to really do anything at the gym in terms of recording. I'm waiting for a new one. I'm waiting for a nice new one coming. Uh, it's going to be here Friday. I got a nice new wallet, too. Ooh. You can't get na designer name brand wallets if you want to carry a lot of money in cards, by the way, guys. Like... Those designer wallets like Gucci and Louie and stuff, you'd probably have to buy a special one that was fat enough to hold more than a couple hundred dollar bills and one credit card because some of those car those wallets are designed to hold a few hundred dollar bills and a black card for real rich people. I obviously do not have a black card and oftentimes I am not carrying around numerous one hundred dollar bills on me. So it's not raining out. It's not freezing, so I'm gonna go for a walk. Just gotta keep my YouTube active here. Just sharing my thoughts with all of y'all. So, all right, let's get to it. All righty, I had to get one, guys. This is the breakfast for champions. I had to just get a sandwich really quick, light on the carbs. I fasted this morning, so this is my first meal, really, and it's after one o'clock, so I had a protein shake this morning. My bad. But uh, I'm about to go train arms and some back. Let's get to it. This is easily, hands down, the quietest I have ever seen a gym. I don't know why they don't got the music on. It's very quiet, but it allows me to film and not have copyright issues if they're playing music, so. I'm gonna do some arms and back. My tripod is broken that I have right now, so I might not be able to record much, so. Uh, we'll have that, a new one Friday, and a microphone is on the way as well, finally, so. Let's get after it. Okay, guys, so I just finished my workout here at Worlds. I did just a whole bunch of upper body stuff, blasting biceps, triceps, a little bit of back. Uh, I wasn't able to record I was able to record long ways from my phone, but when I turned it sideways to record for YouTube, it kept falling off my stand. My, tri my tripod broke. I literally just bought a new one yesterday, so um, it should be here Friday, it said. Friday or Saturday at the latest, so 
But the other gym that I go to, No Limits, they actually have tripods there, so I can always record there. They just don't have as, as many, it's not, I love going to Lone Limits for the space and the privacy and the top-notch equipment, but it's not as big, it's not as open, there's not as big as selection, which that is completely fine, like I love it, but that's why I do this for a living and I go to multiple different gyms for multiple different things. I like changing up the atmosphere and using different equipment for different things. Worlds here is better for arms, I think, personally, and more, they got more accessory machines, whereas, uh, low limits, I, I'm not, I don't even really do, com I'm not even really going huge on, heavy on, uh, compound movements, but I can do both at both gyms comfortably. Squatting in my legs, you know, legs is where I've been hitting it off with no limits. I love no limits for my legs. That place has turned me into a beast with my legs. Sebastian Zona, if you're watching this or ever listen to this, you got a great gym and I'm awesome. Or, uh, I'm so glad that I discovered this awesome gym uh, since I've been back here in Rochester. Uh, even if I don't end up staying here for very long or long term, this will always be home to me and I will always be coming back and forth. Uh, unfortunately, my family is slowly, uh, you know, dying off and, and aging and I have less and less family in the Rochester area as time goes on. So there's less things that I'm going to be coming back as time goes on. So. Uh, but my sister lives here and some other family lives here, so I'll still be coming back for many, many years to come and we'll always visit no matter what. So I'm going to go for a walk and uh, yeah, see you there. Okay, so I am on my walk and as you guys can see, I am in one of the big fields slash trails that I typically walk on often. So I've only gotten 3,000 steps up till this point. So I don't finish this walk right now until I've got at least 10,000. Uh, take about walking at a pretty decent, faster walk. You know, I'm not walking slow, I'm walking relatively quick. So it's a pretty quick pace. Probably be 30 to 40 minutes to get that 7,000 steps or close to it. Um. You know, some of these people that stay extremely lean and shredded are training six, seven days a week, doing cardio every single day. Some of the people I know are doing up to 20K steps seven days a week. And I was doing that at one point, but it just gasses me too hard. So I'm going to get walking, get my mind going, and I'll come back to this. <sighs> we are back. So... I am going to give you guys a little story, something a little revealing um, about how this whole fitness thing really started. Uh, I was actually in prison. You know, I had started working out in county jail with like a um, people were using sheets with what, plastic bags filled with water. And then we had to fill water in these plastic bags from the sink. And it was hard to get a plastic bag. You had to get a porter or a trustee to get them. And they had to mess with you and like you enough to even give you one. So I got one filled it up and you know it's like cur curling and doing tricep stuff you're not able to do everything that you're able to do in a gym but it was working and uh, I just kept going I kept going to the gyms uh, anytime I went to solitary confinement and got in trouble for a couple of months I was doing hundreds and hundreds of push-ups every single day dips on my bed jumping jacks uh, and that's how I actually when I was in prison most of my workouts were actually becoming uh, hit and cardio based especially near the end there I got out June 2019 but uh, closer to the end of 2018 and most of 2019 is when I really started doing it it was crazy I was out in the yard doing a lot of bear crawls and a lot of weird things that people who don't know anything about fitness are working out you know a lot of guys from the hood and gangs watching me like what's this guy doing and then sure enough I was actually part of a fitness program at one of the prisons here in New York uh, in Mohawk Correctional Facility where every Tuesday I went to the gym and it was held specifically for people that were part of this fitness club. And it was really cool. I actually got to direct two of the classes uh, for 30 inmates. But I did do a lot of weight training too. And as time went on, I started getting jacked. I would see people at, you know, I, I, I got in trouble and I got shuffled around a lot of guys. I got dirty urines in prison for smoking weed and doing dumb stuff because you get bored in prison. You don't have a ton of money to keep getting high on drugs every day. It's really, unless you're like a kingpin or super rich already and have money, you're not doing drugs every day in prison. But, 
you know, a random drug test. Once you get a random drug test, they start calling you down for more and more and more. And I kept getting busted on them and I just didn't care because when I went to solitary confinement, I was still getting fed. It was peace and quiet. I was able to read my books with no one interrupting me except for a, a really annoying bunk mate. But, you know, I started deadlifting 355 for reps, no straps, no equipment. We don't have any equipment. I think what some people were wrapping socks around, were sneaking out socks and wrapping socks around their hands and making makeshift uh, lifting straps to do deadlifts and stuff like that and dumbbell rows. And most places didn't have dumbbells past 100s, and it was amazing if you did. Uh, I had gotten up to 85s for reps on incline bench for dumbbells. Uh, mind you, I wasn't even 200 pounds because I was doing a lot of cardio and hit, but I got jacked. And it was, you know, it was funny as I took closer to the end of my time, I'd see people that I had seen two years prior at other prisons and would see me be like, yo, Jeff, you're jacked now. And, you know, I was walking around. Uh, the yard right before I went home, I was at Groveland, which is the place I started at. Now, Groveland is a prison, a it's the lightest medium security prison in New York State, where basically once they call yard time, you can just go. There's no one watching you. The whole entire compound, you can walk around it, move around it, take your shirt off, lay out in the sun, lay in a towel, I'm dead serious, bring your coffee out. I would walk around with my shirt off and get a tan when it was summertime, so I went home in the summer right before summer started. And uh, I was just getting jacked, lifting the weights, doing cardio. And when I had gone home, I wasn't even 200 pounds. I was around 200, 195 or something like that. And then obviously, once I started working and making money here, I started training here. But I'll never forget, I was in one of the um, weightlifting shacks outside at Mohawk. Yeah, Mohawk. And I was about to deadlift 355. I'll never forget... Now, the weights are all uh, welded to the barbells. So 315, 225, all welded. The plate's are already on. You have to have someone help you lift those barbells up to a bench if you want to bench press it. Or you have to muscle up. Any way. People are literally muscling up to 315 onto, like, shrug racks. You know, like, we had shrug racks and everything. It was crazy. So these guys came out, and they were bloods. They were part of the bloods. And uh, they were like, yo, you messing with that barbell? I was standing in front of it they didn't see me lifting they probably thought I was like just some tall scrawny wannabe lifting white dude who wasn't really that strong and I was like yeah I am messing with that and he looked at me like oh you know okay like he thought he was gonna muscle his way into taking the barbell I was like no I'm not done with this and I think they were surprised I think I did 355 for six which at the time was really good for me. And my back hurt afterwards because I didn't have a belt and surely my form was not the best. Um, but yeah, that was a funny story. Uh, I worked out in every single prison I went to around some of the most gangster people from Harlem, the Bronx, Brooklyn, Washington Heights. And honestly, <laughs> because I was lifting weights and I was a stronger guy, I was friends with a lot of the people that were in gangs. Or not necessarily friends, but acquaintances with them. I was good with them. Uh, there was a couple jails I went to, a couple prisons I went to where I had my own phone time because these guys ran the phones, but I never had a problem with it. I'm not lying to you guys. I'm just being dead honest on how this all went down. Uh, it was really crazy when I started really lifting weights. You know, I was lifting weights with a lot of the bloods and a lot of gangster guys because that's who was out there cranking the iron and, and getting crazy with it. So, yeah, there's an interesting story for you guys. I'm going to continue my walk, and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video.